And welcome to another edition of It's Not Just the ICUC and ICC, Life Purpose Edition, or as we're titling it here, the Seeking God Edition. The ICOC and the ICC talk a lot about seeking God. They have an entire study in the first principle indoctrination series dedicated to it. And even as baptized members of the church, they they harp very heavily on Jeremiah 29 verse 11 and scriptures like that to instill this sense of divine purpose from their version and interpretation of God. And a lot of times, as we're going to see here, there's not a lot of difference. There's tons of overlap between the ICOC and ICC's teachings and and mis-teachings and misinterpretations, uh, assuming there's a, a perfect interpretation. But the intent and the use of their interpretations to manipulate people and to and to quote unquote guide people in the right direction under this idea of what God's perfect plan is, what God wants them to do, what they should do. A lot of times, and let's be honest, it's almost entirely most of the time, it's, it's impossible to, to separate the two. How can your pastor, your evangelist, your Bible talk leader, or whatever particular Christian denomination, doesn't matter the title of the, the, the Christian or the church leader, they, how can they tell you what God's plan for your life is or tell you to seek this plan? And, and just the way that they present it is something that I don't entirely disagree with. Let's be clear, before watching this, you may watch it and think, well, what's wrong with some of what they're saying? And I agree, I don't think there's something inherently wrong with the idea of, you know, the higher power you believe in and you relate to having guidance for you in your life. But I think that the way that they take it and the way that they use it is problematic. Because when someone tells you how to quote unquote seek God, when they will have the power to define what seeking God needs, that is always a problem. It's always room for manipulation because then they get to determine and speak on God's behalf what it means to seek God, what God thinks about whether or not you're right with God. And, and then it just gets very messy. And then it gets manipulative and no one can really tell you what it means to see God or you're not seeking God properly or you're not seeking God enough and God doesn't think you're seeking him or something's wrong with you or what's going on in your life is happening because you aren't seeking God. So it just creates a lot of hoops for people to jump through based on man-made rules. But but that's me. What are your thoughts? Let's get into it and see that it's not just the ICUC and ICC. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. So believe God has a plan for you and that he's going to show it to you in his time. Okay, I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that I'm in God's perfect will for my life because I know that is the place where I'm going to experience favor and divine blessings from God. But God is also writing a story in your life to tell his story. What's God's plan? Not, not just what's, what am I to do today? What's, what, what does God want me to do in this particular situation? But what, what's his plan? What's his purpose? What's he trying to accomplish in my life? Did God just put you here just to exist for a while and then call you home? No. He has a purpose, a plan, and a will for your life. Nobody can fire you and interrupt the purpose of God. There is no stopping what God has started until it is complete. He will see it through. 
And I think that uh, the difference between uh, what I call the survival level of living, the success level of living, and the significance level of living is, do you figure out what on earth am I here for? God looks for exactly what he wants. And I don't mean to get biological, but he fertilizes the right egg at the right moment. Do you realize the percentage chance of you being born when you were born to do what you do, and you're going to walk around in self-doubt trying to figure out if God chose you? You ought to know God chose you. You ought to believe God chose you, and you ought to go through your life with your head held high no matter what is in your bank account because I'm chosen. Well, that's why it's important to look for the multiple doors that need to open, not just one or two doors. When God is really confirming something in your life, all the necessary steps that need to happen for that thing to happen will actually happen. God begins to open certain doors in your life while at the same time closing other doors. This is oftentimes God's way of saying, this is the direction that I want your life to go down because I am behind the scenes orchestrating things and working out the details on your behalf. Holy Spirit, he will often speak to us and reveal what decisions we need to make on a regular basis in a variety of situations. And remember this, that God knowing us perfectly knows how we came into the world, what our advantages were, what our disadvantages were, what our opportunities were, what our parents knew, how they knew to raise us and not raise us. All of that is a part of God's wisdom and knowledge and His grace and goodness and mercy in working in our hearts throughout our life. You confirmation that you're doing what He wants you to do in your specific situation you will also experience biblical emotions. Emotions should certainly not be our only guide in life, but the Bible also does say that when we are obeying God and doing what he says, there will be certain emotions that we experience in our own hearts and in our own lives. The will of God is day. determined by knowing the word of God. Mm. So what I mean by that is that uh, God's will is, is set forth in his word, the application of that word to our individual situations and decisions is either clear based upon what Scripture says, or it's going to be a matter of discernment based on the principles found in the statements God has given us. And I could perhaps, perhaps, offer some sort of nugget here or there, but that's nothing close to somebody that you know, family, church, elders, who can start to pepper you with questions. Hey, did you think about this? What about that? Why are you thinking like that? There is wisdom to be gleaned from godly people. There comes that point when God reveals to you what he wants you to do, but like Elijah, you've got to decide, am I going to say yes, I'm going to go to Ahab and speak the pronouncement or not? Seek God on a... deep level and go into real serious fasting or we're just spending regular, consistent, intimate time with God, it is often in those seasons when we're spending consistent time with Him that He will actually reveal His will to us and speak very clearly to us. As I walk.